Yeah, hello, my name's John Pinder. I'm the port hydrographer, which effectively means I'm the surveyor for the Port of London Authority. Obviously, the prime importance of my role within the Port of London Authority, working directly for the Chief Harbour Master, is that uh, we're responsible for safety of navigation, which means basically stopping ships running aground or hitting obstructions. And so my department's here, one to find where the bottom is and one other to find where obstructions, whether it be sunken boats or things that have fallen off boats or even old wrecks, which the new technology is enabling us to find with much better accuracy than we could ever do before. And the hydrography started off uh, hundreds of years ago, basically just using lead lines and sextants. And that's how Captain Cook explored most of the world. And you'll see on old charts just lines running along the chart. And that was the line that the ship took. Job of surveying the Thames, um, we've got 400 square miles. We start right up at Teddington and run right the way down to the uh, southern North Sea. And as you've probably seen, the waters are very murky. You can't see anything there. So we do everything with sound. And uh, now we've got some very clever equipment, which uh, some people may have seen, where you can almost take the water away and get a perfect um, show of the riverbed. And so it, using sound and GPS, we measure the riverbed. Uh, regarding historic wrecks, we've, uh, we were going to dredge a area called the Prince's Channel and we did some surveying out there a while ago this is about three or four years ago now and we saw on the sonar some sort of like fingers sticking out of the sand which has never really bothered us before because they weren't as hazardous shipping but uh, on further investigation it was decided these looked like the ribs of an old ship and so we sent the divers down and they started recovering artifacts and as it turns out this was a ship built uh, in around about 1570 and it was considered to be an armed merchantman and it had several cannon on board along with various other artifacts like a shoe and um, a leather gherkin and other bits and so the archaeologists got very excited and we've managed to recover large parts of it, in fact all of the area is now being cleared and uh, the channel has now been dredged. It's a major route into the southern port of the Thames. Well, the most enjoyable and interesting part used to be going out on the boats on a nice day, uh, but I haven't done that for a number of years now. But it's still a challenge, you know, I'm very much part of the safety management team. And so, you know, when we're setting policies on, you know, how to ensure the safety of the ships coming up here, we're talking about under keel clearances, which on the larger ships, you know, we're coming up with less than a metre underneath their keel at some times, and we're talking about huge ships. I mean, people uh, think of the river as being this great deep hole, but I mean, what we're looking at behind me there, that's 600 metres across uh, at the narrowest point in this reach, and yet in the middle it is only uh, 10 metres deep. And in fact, just over just to, the, to my left there, it's about nine metres deep at chart datum. So the ships have to rely on the tide. So if you draw a scale diagram. It's not a channel like that, it's just a very thin sliver of water along the surface. And so it's, uh, that, that's the interesting thing is tracking what they're and getting people to perceive what it's really like down there. For the future, yes, more environmental work, more engineering support work, uh, larger ships coming in, more ships, more developments going on, so a lot of involvement with that. So I think we're going to be busy for a few years yet.